It's the Mike Schickman Show. News Talk 550 and 92.1 WSVA. It's a soggy Wednesday here in the Shenandoah Valley. We are very pleased to have, uh, we'll call him the real Mark Warner on our program. He's not the senator. He's not uh, the retiring vice president at JMU. Uh, instead, he's an acknowledged specialist in the area of infectious disease control through the use of modern disinfectants and critical care cleaning procedures. He's worked with high visibility organizations as well as government agencies, including Homeland Security, FEMA, the military, and others. Mark Warner, welcome to the Mike Schickman Show. It's great to have you. Thanks, Mike. I, I don't know that I've ever been introduced in such a wonderful way as being the most important Mark Warner in the world. Thank well, you. Uh, I'm a big fan of the JMU Mark Warner. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, and, I, and I, I'm a big fan of yours because uh, this is something most people don't think about. When we see all of the first responders, when we see all of the people hur you know, hurrying, the Cajun Navy, uh, the just the volunteers from across Texas, I know a lot of people are sending uh, from churches and other organizations around the country to help out the people in the wake of Hurricane Harvey, and who knows what Irma's going to do to uh, Florida on north, but... Uh, it kind of reminds me, and I mentioned this earlier on my program, it kind of reminds me of those first and second responders to the grounds of 9-11, ground zero. And nobody really thought about this. Everybody thought about rescuing people. But so many of those first and second responders ended up deathly ill eventually, uh, many of them dying because of their contamination. It's a real thing. No doubt about that. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is that there's all kinds of infectious material in the floodwaters that they're dealing with. And these infectious materials might be things that just make somebody ill, but they could also be something along the lines of a flesh-eating bacteria. We're all familiar with the term MRSA. And that's uh, one of the things that we worry about the most that might exist in these floodwaters. It's pretty easy to get a nick while you're walking around in floodwaters that's black and opaque. And I'm really worried. My heart actually bleeds for these people in, uh, in Houston. And I think we may be looking at something similar as Irma hits Florida. We're talking about just uh, the detritus of uh, the treatise, that is, of uh of uh, living in modern civilizations uh you know we we all try to live in pretty uh clean homes but uh a lot of people aren't that fortunate a lot of people don't work on it a lot of people don't care and uh not to mention all of the flooding of uh cisterns and uh, commodes and everything else we're talking about a deadly soup we definitely are. One of the things that concerns me the most when I watch this, although I'm completely inspired by the volunteers that are helping out, but I'm kind of horrified by seeing all these volunteers wading through these uh, infectious waters without necessarily having the right protection equipment on, things like uh, eye protection, things like gloves, things that might uh, protect them from some of the bacteria and viruses that exist in those waters. Uh, a dear friend of mine once told me that uh, he'd gone through a number of, of the hurricanes in the Houston area. And he said he'd always uh, try to get back into his house or apartment and he'd carry a uh, golf club because his big concern was snakes. And I just read that today that that's become a very big problem. Well, actually, I read one where a guy found an alligator in his living room, so I agree that some of these animals are the, are a very obvious threat. But I think the thing to keep in mind is that our most threatening uh, enemy might actually be those things that are microscopic, things like infectious bacteria, um, viruses that actually live and thrive. You've got to remember that we're dealing with uh, moisture levels and warmth levels that make this area in Houston a petri dish for the development of bacteria. Bacteria actually multiplies about every 15 to 20 minutes 
through a process called binary fission. It means one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. And we all remember that from math class, that that ends up to being millions overnight. And that's really what we're fighting down there. It, it doesn't seem, Mark Warner, to take more than just a, a paper cut to get you infected. It can be as little as a paper cut, as little as a little nick on the shin. And part of the big concern is that um, beyond what happens with first responders is that people are going to be wanting to move back into their homes and businesses. And part of what I do with the ISSA's Cleaning Management Institute um, is to get people certified in the proper procedures for disinfecting what you and I might do in our homes to spray a little disinfectant and wipe it off with a paper towel, we don't really realize that's not really disinfecting. In fact, it's not only ineffective, but it might actually spread disease. And I'm really worried that as we watch people moving back into their homes and businesses in Houston, that there's going to be a lot of people doing it in an ineffective way and might actually be inadvertently spreading disease rather than eliminating it. Explain that, if you would, Mark, because most people think if you spray something with a disinfectant, you're fine. That's a great question, Mike. I get asked this a lot. It's part of what we do with the ISSA. We certify people as custodial technicians, which means they understand how to actually professionally disinfect. What it takes is pre-cleaning a surface, first off, then applying a disinfectant to it. Because if you don't pre-clean it first, you've actually got material that might be preventing the disinfectants from disinfecting that surface. After you let it sit for a period of time, and that period of time is required by the EPA and the CDC to be about 10 minutes when you're dealing with an unknown pathogen. After you let it sit that long, you have to remove that slurry and then rinse that surface. It's actually a four-step process, and very few people actually know that that's the right way to do it. I sure as heck didn't, be, per, be perfectly <laughs> frank. I thought, you know, spray a little, uh, a, a little, uh, you know, of course, Formula 409, whatever the heck it is, and then you're, you're fine and, uh, by wiping it up, but uh, I did not know that. But the, the whole concept of just such a big area being flooded out, and you're looking at the same thing at the Virgin Islands, the video we're seeing of Irma down there, stunning. And uh, also, you know, I mean, the folks in New Orleans, Katrina, you know, MRSA is not an easy thing. And with all of our overuse of antibiotics through the generations, people are, are, are becoming antibiotic resistant. It's not just getting a shock that'll, that'll cure you. That's true. What people don't necessarily realize all the time is that a lot of these infectious materials have the ability to survive on surfaces for a very long period of time. That's because some of these really dangerous pathogens are kind of built like an M&M, if I can use that term. They've got a, a nucleus that's actually soft material, and that's the bacteria, but they're surrounded by a, a protective barrier, and it allows them to survive on surfaces for a very long periods of time. A lot of people think that they can just let their house dry out and then go into it and clean it, and nothing could be further from the truth. There's things like MRSA, there's things like... Uh, other forms of gastrointestinal intestinal uh, illnesses that can live on surfaces for as long as 30 days. Think about the cruise lines and their fight with norovirus. Um, these things can last for a very long period of time. They can be spread around through the improper act of disinfecting and just waiting to reinfect people once they um, get exposure to a what we call a portal of entry, which might be a nose, mouth, and eye, which is a direct pathway to the bloodstream or even an open wound. Uh, I'll tell you what has been the most moving thing of, of Hurricane Harvey relief is, of course, the volunteers. I also saw on your uh, ISSA uh, website a link that the, the folks at Procter & Gamble are stepping up to help. We've had a lot of people rally to the cause. The ISSA itself has a foundation that has been put together to allow people to, as individuals to contribute to Harvey. And the Procter & Gamble news also hit today, and that was big news as well. There's a lot of manufacturers that are involved with the ISSA that have stepped up to the cause. 
One of the comments that I might make, Mike, is that a lot of people think that the best that could be done down there is to spend money or, or to donate time or to send food and to send clothing. But what is often not thought about is the fact that people down there need things that are not obvious, things like goggles, eye protection, gloves, uh, masks, things that allow them to actually do the act of cleaning without uh infecting themselves or harming themselves in any way. Well, what touched me about the P&G, and I never heard of this, the Tide Loads of Hope Mobile Laundry Unit. That is fascinating. <laughs> it's what, a big truck with, uh, what, 12 washers and dryers? I mean, that's pretty impressive they, because people, you know, that's the first thing they want to do is wash up and, uh, you know, finding laundry facilities when you don't have running water is kind of difficult. And no doubt about it, and that's actually one of the uh, best ways to go about cleaning things that are uh, what we would call porous, things like textile. The other things that are porous that people don't think about is their own hands and their own skin. I mean, technically, one of the most important things for all those people to be doing is to be washing constantly. I mean, the whole act of using hand sanitizer has tend to lead people into... Uh, um, let's, let's call it a crutch, not necessarily doing what they should be doing, which is literally washing their skin rather than relying on hand sanitizers alone. Mark, where can people find out more on how to help? Well, I think one of the best sources of information would be the ISSA website at www.issa.com. I'm just one of many experts that are involved in the cleaning industry, and we're all available to help. Mark, uh, it is a real joy to have you on the program. Continue the good work, and uh, thank everybody at ISSA for me, would you? I sure will, Mike. Thanks for having me on. I hope it was helpful. Mark Warner joining us from the ISSA.